Yesterday, some news came to the public limelight that a man who is believed to have stolen 1.5 billion Kenyan shilling from the Equity Bank was abducted by the police officers. Today, lawyer Ndegwanjiro, who is the representative and the advocate of the man that is believed to have stolen this large amount of money, appeared in court to represent his client who he said could not make it to court because he was abducted and has not yet been returned by the DCI. Let's get down to the story. How did this man symphon or steal 1.5 billion from Equity Bank without getting noticed? A viral case scored the public high after it imagined that a famous Moranga politician's son has been abducted in broad daylight in connection to an equity bank case. According to the nation, David Moshire Kimani, a manager at equity bank was the man behind the 1.5 billion haste that hit the bank a few weeks ago. Reports indicate that the said money was withdrawn from the bank salaries account with the use of one manager's credentials. It has now emerged that 47 transactions took place with the money transferred to other banks in the country before withdrawal. Currently, the said suspect cannot be traced with his lawyer Te Gwanjiro saying he was abducted by DCI officers. There is a CCTV footage revealing that. In another shocking development on the incident, Another incident has unfolded when some assailants dressed in tactical gear broke into Moshiri's residence. Inside, the 1.5 billion ba equity bank case. Now the CCTV footage captured the moment they cut the power and forcibly entered the house, but the video held before they could be seen fully. Moshiri Halia was taken from his home in the Goto Kiambu County under similar circumstances. These abductions are suspected to be connected to an ongoing Kenya shillings 1.5 billion fraud investigation in, involving the Equity Bank. This story has continued to leave a lot of questions unanswered among the people of the Republic of Kenya. We are waiting to see how this will be explained. Now, the staggering 1.5 billion was stolen from Equity Bank, which is the largest bank in Kenya by asset in July 2024. Now, according to the shocking investigative report that was published by the Daily Nation on Thursday, August 15th, this money haste took place on July 10th, 2024. On the date, Equity Bank's internal control department detected a series of suspicious transactions at the bank's salaries account. The transaction involved 47 withdrawals, as we said earlier. These transactions involved money transfer from the salaries account to multiple other accounts in other banks within the country. Now, quoting, whenever money is sent from one bank account to another, the systems on each side communicate details of transaction. These details include names of the individuals or entities exchanging funds, amounts involved, and the integrity of the transactions. In the case of the 47 with the drawers and transfers, this correspondence was missing. The nation reported, citing the lack of corresponding credits in the transaction that were made on July 10th. Now, the report noted that correspondence credits were missing from the equity bank side where they were being sent from. This raised suspicions that led the control team to review the transaction. Now, upon review, it was quickly established that equity bank had been scammed. Kenya shillings 1.5 billion. According to the nation report, this money was meant for the payment of salaries to the bank's employees as well as other expenses other expense items. The following day, on July 11, the bank's head of security, Kevin Mwangi, reported the theft to the Banking Fraud Investigation Unit, BFIU, 
at the Directorate of Criminal Investigation. Now, pre preliminary investigations by the BFIU established that transactions amounting to a total of 1.5 billion 545 million 887,140 shillings 0.49 were moved using credentials of David Mashiri Kimani, who was the equity bank manager at the Grow Processing Center salar pro uh, salary, salary Processing Unit. Now, detectives have found that Mashiri's credentials were used when he was on leave. The report by the nation stated that detectives had established that the money haste was planned at Britam Towers with more than one unit at the bank involved. Quoting, Mashiri took, took sick leave in Haleju when there was communication between the salary processing unit, the finance department and the reconciliation unit requiring them to align to the bank's policy and guidelines in regularizing accounts, the nation reported. Now, referencing the BFIU investigation into the matter, apparently most of the accounts that the money was debited from were new. After they were transferred to other bank accounts, they were once again moved to that account and then withdrawn to avoid detention. Most of it, most, if not all, of the accounts into which the money was paid into were operated by businesses that were newly registered. Mashiri and his father, Peter Kimani, were arrested as prime suspects in the East. Mashiri's father, the BFIU, said, is involved in tenders with the Muranga County and National Government and his homes are among the places to be searched. So, this is one of the reasons that gave the police officers, or let me say the DCI, the courage to go ahead and abduct Mashiri so that they would continue with their investigation to gather the insights and details on what really happened in the 1.5 billion Kenya heads. Let me tell you, you know, Imagine what it takes to, 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 to see for, or let me say steal, 1.5 billion Kenyan shillings from a bank, a, 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 a bank branch that you have been working in. Hmm? That's what this guy did. Now, we will continue to keep you updated in regards to this story. Please make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more details and more updates.